Hey guys, Cloud Brothers here with Daniel Van Kirk mm-hmm. and our guests on a very special Dumb People Town this week are two fantastic actors. They have a great podcast, Michael Sullivan and Chris <laughs> Rosenbaum. No, Chris I Sullivan it. and Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, thank you, boys, for joining. Did you have fun in Dumb People Town? Yeah. Real fun. Yeah. We, we learn what the phrase "this uh, food has nothing to do with it" or "this yeah, has nothing yeah. to do with yes. food." We learn what that means. Uh, we learn uh, what a, we learn what a shit crate is, and we learn what proper wedding attire is when the bride says you can wear anything, anything you want, yeah. anything. Check out this episode; it's fantastic with these guys. You're gonna love it. Dump People Town with Michael Rosenbaum and Chris Sullivan. If your server has a name tag, <laughs> in a restaurant. Hey, it's White Boy Chris. If the Pat Down's ever made you laugh, then join our Patreon and support us. Get bonus content, a t-shirt, or an autographed copy of Rabbit, Miss Pat's autobiography. Visit misspatcomedy.com for the link to the Patreon, and while you're there, join our Facebook group. Welcome back to the Pat Down. I'm here with my good friend Chris. Hello. <laughs> my good friend Dion. What up, y'all? We're here today. What are we talking about? Oh, God. What With Section 8 housing? We're talking about yes. being on welfare. Section 8. How I got off the program because I lied and they took the shit from me. Judge Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown <laughs> and just growing up in America. Hey, and I saw a bitch with five bucket of cr- tropical corn. Tropical. <laughs> <laughs> just wait till y'all hear it. Tropicana orange juice. Yes. And I started to hate. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be back after the music. You better get up, get out, and tune into this podcast. This Pat spit the truth, spit the real facts. Nothing but the ugly, classy at the same time. Pat got the flavor, these are not the same lines. That's the politics, she been on the real grind. It could be pretty, but ugly at the same time. Just tune in, put your lock on the spin down. Ain't no need for the wait and turn her up now. What you talking about? Is it real though? And cut the game, you get no play like Nintendo. You wait the time, turn the up, nothing but the ugly. Straight off the top, everything she say, you know it's funny. Full blast, this is taste of the future. Listen on your iPhone or your desktop computer. Share it, tweet it, ain't no way to beat it. Nothing but the ugly, turn it up and gon' repeat it. Nothing but the ugly. Welcome to another episode of the Pat Down. I'm here with my good friend. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was three of them. My yeah, good friend, y'all. sit your ass down, is in the building, y'all. What up, sit your ass down? What up? Why you standing up? Sit your ass down. This is the, this is the poor girl that got, it, she was in the corner for 45 minutes during one podcast. And then you look at her and you go, do you like that podcast? She goes, no. <laughs> she ain't gonna like so this you, one either. So you made her stand there. Sit another your ass minutes. down. And if you breathe hard, I got something for you. Welcome back to another episode. Of I'm Chris. Pat that's Down. Dion. That's Chris. That's Dion. I'm sorry, y'all. You know, I have to raise these kids in the middle of doing this shit. I'm somebody, mama. I didn't even want to be a mama. Motherfucker just dropped these kids off <clears throat> at my house and gave them to me. I shouldn't have no kids. <laughs> uh oh. She choking on an orange, y'all. You guys doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> they like, fuck you, Chris. <laughs> like, we up. wouldn't have to be quiet if your ass wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> It is my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> Always blaming the white man. Yeah, blame the um, whitey. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I, w- I shouldn't even have no kids. I should be somewhere living my best life. But as you, you give know, them back. You do know. That, I right? can't give them back. I fucking love the kids. So uh, you hear shut that? up. No she, conversation. She loves you guys. And the rule so in know. my house is don't talk to each other unless you pay bills. <laughs> 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 I'm not. I'm not. It's gonna like being that. born in jail, <laughs> right? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> motherfuckers passing notes. I love them, <laughs> but they talk. Be quiet, y'all. I'm Auntie Grandma. I'm doing a podcast, and then you can be done. I want to talk about today because I was having this conversation with my husband, right? And as I'm having this conversation with my husband, I'm a landlord. I own a property in Atlanta, and one of the conversation we was talking about is being. On government assistance. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Pat, you shouldn't talk about that. And I'm like, why? He said, because people are going to think you bougie. I'm like, no. I used to be on Section 8. I used to be on welfare. I used to be on food stamps and Medicaid. And my frustration with a lot of this shit is uh, people stand on the system too long. Mm-hmm. I, d- I think I truly did. De- Truly believe that these systems are here to help you, but not carry you. Right. So he's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Pat? So I said, be quiet, girl. I said, nobody should be able to be on Section 8 for 30 fucking years. Section 8 is where they help you with your rent. Right. And he was like, well, aren't you being a little bougie? I said, unless you 
special need kids or you special need or the elderly. If you're a strong motherfucker like me, you and Dion, nobody should be helping us with our rent. Right. And if it is, it's for should be for a term limit. And on top of that, a lot of times when you rent your property out to Section 8, a lot of these motherfuckers don't know how to act. They tear your fucking property up. And the government do absolutely nothing. But they beg you to get on these programs, but they don't they don't protect the landlord. And I and now they have a little program in place. I ran into a section. I was on Section 8. When I was on Section 8, I had six fucking kids in a five-bedroom house. My rent was nothing. Yeah, so like zero? Literally zero? What's the My rent, rent was... Hold on for a second, yeah. Come here. Who got the iPad on? Um, Go downstairs in the living room. Go downstairs in the living room. Fuck, fuck y'all. Lord. They scattered. They scattered like... Go downstairs in the living room. I'm sorry. I'm not this mean. I love these kids. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> See how fast? Yes. <laughs> they were like, freedom! <laughs> they got on, got on here like the Underground Railroad. <laughs> we, talked, we talked about the giftedness of black athletes. Last <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Getting away from... <laughs> Running from their black mothers, so I used to be. So my rent was literally zero. Okay. I used to have. Uh, I used to um, have six kids, which four of them was my sisters, and two of them was mine. And so I mean, you know, I was on welfare, lazy as fuck, watching TV, one trying to work on that until the Bill Clinton changed everything. But I never tore up the tenant, the, the, I mean, the unit that I lived in. I took good care of this house. Right. So when I bought the house, which I still own to this day, I wanted to give back. And when I wanted to give back, I said, I'm going to rent this house out to Section 8, you know, so somebody can have a better place to live. Well, I rented my house out to Section 8, and this ghetto bitch tore my house up. The bitch went in my wall and stole my plumbing. She, were you essentially subleasing it, so you get the Section 8, but then you're letting them live? So, or No, no, no. I'm the mean? landlord. I, I rent the house on Section oh, 8 okay. today, I gotcha. and the government gotcha. pays the rent. Okay. Well, this girl tore up my house, y'all, literally tore my fucking house up. My insurance company paid me eighteen thousand dollars in damage. Jeez. She had her uncles come in and take the copper out of the walls because I had an older house right. that I had remodeled and tore it up, and they gave me absolutely nothing, which pisses me off now. You know, being somebody who was privileged on the program who wanted to give back, I personally think that nobody owes you shit in this country. Right. You nobody should pay your rent for thirty years. It should be a, a, a time limit on it. You should have it, 10 years at the most to be on Section 8. So here in Indiana, we used to, we still have township trustees, but like we had very hyper local charitable organizations in the beginning of the state. And so if you, you can go to the township trustee and you can say, you know, I've got to pay for school clothing. I can't make it this month or I can't pay my light bill or I can't do this. And so they'll float you for a couple months. They'll pay the bill or they'll help you with rent or they'll like get you caught up. But like out of 900 applications, this one trustee only granted 200 because she'd walk in and she'd say, well, it's totally different. Look, look how. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's 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 meant to be not Section 8. Well, but I'm saying like that system of government assistance is sort of like what you're talking a little bit about. No, because we have that, too. They do that in Atlanta. Okay, And this happened in Atlanta. They do that with uh, with uh, when they when they have a certain amount of money to help people pay their rent, pay their mm. utility bills, that's more like an energy assistant, a rent assistant. Okay, Section Eight is something that you can have, and you can actually pass it down after you die in some states. Really, in Atlanta, if you die, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, if somebody dies and they're on Section Eight, the next kid in line can get it. Mm. It's almost like if your mama left you a, a, a check. Sure. So I mean, or some money, or well, inheritance. It makes, it makes sense if your you know mom's like on drugs and she's the only person like their kids need a place to live no no no. the mama can be 80 and you could be 40 she died you get right. a section eight. Okay. i think i think i'm not for sure but my whole thing is why i want to do a podcast is because on this is because i'm a landlord and this lady tore my house over eighteen thousand dollars, and the government was that, that the lady that you was on judge joe brown for Oh, that was another bitch. She won Section 8. She okay. was like, wait, she, what? <laughs> yeah, I was Ms. on Judge Joe went on Judge Joe Brown. You ain't seen that episode? No. I will, uh, show you, I will show you that episode. How you find it? I think it's on YouTube. Oh, I've been looking for that episode. I was on. So she tore my house. But Okay, this one tore my house before. No, that one tore my house first. Let me back up before I get to the Section 8 lady. So I ran into this lady since he brought up Judge Joe Brown. I got to go a whole different thing. So she stayed in my house a year. I'm renting it, and uh, I got a pretty nice house in Atlanta, four-bedroom, about 3,500 square feet. And um, 
bitch moved out, tore up my dough. Her son stabbed my dough with a fucking axe. And, and I said, look, just come, you know, trying to be nice to her. I said, look, just come and buy me two more doughs and clean the house out. And I give you a deposit back. Well, she wanted to be stupid. She told, she fucking trashed my house, left my doughs tore up, fucked up my carpet. Everything. I thought dog scratched up my wood flow. So I told her, I said, look, 20 years ago, bitch, I ought to whoop your ass. I'm too old now. I'm going to have to get you like the white people. I'm going to sue the fuck out of you. <laughs> I, I'm seriously. I, I, so I, so I, you went to Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> before I got to Judge Joe Brown, I, I opened the phone book because she ran on me. Uh -huh. And I literally fucking flipped the pages. She worked for Malta. That's the transportation in Atlanta. Uh -huh. I called every department. I said, hey, do you know this bitch right here? Because she fucking tore my house and she didn't pay my goddamn rent. And the lady's like, ma'am, this is the maintenance department. I said, well, if you see that bitch you tell her I want my goddamn rent money. <laughs> 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 so make a long story short Finally I got the lawyer department And then you know black folks don't like black folks To fucking go after each other So the, I've got this black Christian lady She said ma'am God don't want black people to sue black people <laughs> <laughs> What sort of bullshit is that? <laughs> this is what she said to me I said well let me tell you this bitch Didn't no white bitch tear up my house A black bitch tore up my house So I think God want me to sue this black bitch <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told her I, I want my goddamn money The bitch tore up my house And she ran out with my husband money Rent money Don't nobody run off with my motherfucking husband money But me <laughs> so she ended up calling. She said, I don't know who this crazy bitch is, but she, she was a manager too at model. She said, uh, this bitch is going to sue you. You need to fucking make out arrangement. I made out arrangement. Right. And then she said, well, I said, I want my fucking 2,500. I filed a paper and everything. I filed a paper to sue this bitch. Right. So make a long story short, two weeks. So we set it up and she ended up paying me. She did. She gave me 2,500. Okay. Well, two weeks later, judge Joe Brown called. I'm like, uh, no, I don't really want to go on no TV. They said, well, just tell us what happened. I said, well, the bitch trashed my house. She left all these fucking booty bees. I'm picking up with my bare hand. I didn't even know the bees came out of her ass or nothing. My husband's like, put them booty bees down. Like, what the fuck is booty bees? What is a booty bee? Ain't no beads. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> she calls them booty beads. But for those of you who I was don't like, know what that meant, like, you know, maybe anal like a, beads are sex toys. Like, yeah, I thought maybe that baby one puts in the or... no, no booty beads. Like she, somebody <laughs> stuck them up her ass and pulled them out. Then when I look close on them, they were kind of dirty. I'm like, oh, bitch, I'm really suing you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you to Judge Joe Brown, ma'am. You know, maybe pick up these shitty ass motherfucking beads. And so, <laughs> I was pissed. That the episode was just as funny. Yeah, of course it was. Miss Pat breathes in She got funny. Judge Joe Brown to say booty beat. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Judge Joe Brown saw it. So there were booty beads in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's, I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> so I, so we go. So I told. Her, I said, "Ma'am, I really don't want to go." She was like, "Oh my god, you're just so funny. What do you do for a living?" So you put all of that on the paperwork when you sue somebody. I'm a comedian. So they said, well, "Do you think we can fire her?" I said, "I don't know," but the bitch number was on my paperwork, so they called her. So she was like, oh, "I want to go to court." I said, "You really want to go to court with me, bitch, on national TV?" Yeah, I want to go to court. Maybe I get some of my money back from your ass. I said, "Well, come on, bitch, let's go to she court." She hung up the phone. I'm gonna be famous. <laughs> oh yeah, I went to court like a white bitch. I had all my she shit. Yeah, paperwork. I had paperwork. I had pictures. Guess I had who did dates. not go to court like a white bitch? <laughs> she went to court like a nigga. And that's why she lost. <laughs> she didn't even had nobody with her. May, may I ask how goes to court? Help. <laughs> uh, nigga you... went to court with no paperwork. Okay. No witnesses. Yes. No receipts. I had She everything. had pictures. Just the spirit of the Lord. She was just like, well, I mean, I didn't know. And I'm like, Stop being funny, Miss Pat. Stop being funny. I said, bitch, I ain't being funny with my goddamn money. You got me in this motherfucking courtroom. You know niggas don't like to come to courtroom and shit. Fucking with those slow-ass Joe Joe Brown. So we get there. And I, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's so funny? You, you, you just, just call funny. Judge Joe Brown slow. <laughs> He's slutty Joe, Joy Brown. Is slow. She says slow. <laughs> slow Joe Brown. That's slow right. Slow Joe, Joe Brown. <laughs> Tell me about the booty bee. <laughs> That's how you, I was like, can you speed this shit she up? I got slow to do. talking motherfucker. I do. I fucking, motherfucker, speed up or put a record in your ass one and match fast forward so I can get it quicker. <laughs> So we went to court and the bitch, 
I ended up winning like forty eight hundred dollar, right? And I got my money back and got rid of her. And then I rent it. Then I started showing that Judge Joe Brown tape to everybody who rent my house. Look, bitch, I don't play that shit. I'm too old to fight you. I'm gonna sue the motherfucking shit out of you. Then I get this section eight tenant. This bitch rip all my walls out. I'm crying. They didn't give me a motherfucking thing. They didn't give me shit for this bitch because she was on a government program. So now I truly believe. Bam, Judge Judy. <laughs> oh, I wish you would judge you for this no working welfare recipient. You know, that shit made me almost vote Republican that day. I said, I see why the Republican don't fuck with you motherfuckers. I'm a, I almost voted Republican after that shit. When you become a land, land I mean, uh, when you become a homeowner and you pay taxes and you start living right, you see why these white people out here crazy than a motherfucker. <laughs> when you living free like I was off section and eating food, they're like, why you motherfucker hating on me and lying with four buckets of grocery? Nigga, because I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So after that, I was like, I, I truly believe that the program should have a time limit. I don't think you should, unless it's something physically wrong with you, physically wrong with you. Now, I I'm not going to talk about food stamps because everybody can't buy food. Right. But but as far as Section 8, I truly believe nobody should pay your rent. Because I got a girlfriend that been on fucking Section 8 for about 30 years. homeless people with food stamps. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where the fuck they gonna put their groceries, nigga? Well, you know. <laughs> no, because they can't. They're gonna California, have a refrigerator box <laughs> with groceries in it. They don't make no goddamn sense. <laughs> no. In California, you can buy fast food with food stamps. Oh, right. Yeah, right, right. so a lot of places, even they're get, beginning to let them buy fast food. Yeah, I'm not going to take food out your mouth. But nobody should. In five years, if it's a 10-year program, in five years, you can become a doctor. Right. You can become a lawyer. You can become a teacher. You can educate yourself right. to become a better person. Right. That's all I'm saying. And I was a, re a welfare recipient, food stamp, get line, section eight, getting bit. So I know how it is to scheme. Each one teach one. I used to have a bit about if the mama get if the mama get welfare nine times out of ten the daughter gonna get welfare welfare is like diabetes if the mama got it the daughter <laughs> might just fucking get it my mama had diabetes i had until i had weight loss surgery right. this, it's a fucking cycle so i truly believe nobody should help you with your rent for longer than fucking 10 years that's just me yeah unless you are uh, you it's got physically a, something wrong physically something wrong with you if right. you got a I kid or if you I got a fucking you an old person we should help old people but a healthy motherfucker like some of my friends who've been on section eight for 30 years no bitch uh we have helped you long enough at this time ho you should be able to fly <laughs> we're in a white neighborhood and they're walking by going Damn, that black woman is right. <laughs> I, just, I see old white men walking by nodding their heads. <laughs> I mean, your mom's, was, my daughter, I was like, you're a fucking Republican. No, I'm a fucking real in this because I've been there. I know that mentality of getting yeah. over. It's and not theoretical for you. It's you lived it. It's not something that you just yeah. sat there and, you know, it's well, people should have that opportunity. Like you realize what it is to actually be enabled and then not enabled and and how much better your well, life it's, is it's now a, the scheme in and of itself if you're a lazy motherfucker and you found a way to circumvent getting a real job and dealing with other people's shit of course there's unless somebody actually fucking makes you get up and do something why would you change right if you got the gravy train rolling why the fuck unless you just in it like this is what i say about miss pat she's so unique is is that she could have stayed on that gravy train and right. been like everybody else. But there was something inside her that told her, I'm not like these motherfuckers. I don't want this shit. Yeah. That, well, takes, that takes a certain level of self-awareness that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. I what? mean, my ex-wife and I did the math one time. If we quit our jobs and went on every available government program, we were going to make an extra $50 a day. Uh, or $50 a month, I mean. So you you look at it and you go like I guess if you're if you're just living off of government programs like what's the incentive to to work I was working 60 hours a week at that point so was she it's like no, I, why wouldn't you do that if you don't have to? Uh, again, let me reiterate this. It's nothing wrong with getting help. It's nothing wrong. I'm talking we're not talking about the people when you you know your your incomes don't allow you to buy the, the the, the total amount of food that you have, you know, that you need. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking right. about lazy motherfucker right, who right. just want handouts, who've been on the system forever. Like I had like, okay. So I had this kid, these kids, I won't say who they are. So I had these kids in the car with me one time and my son worked at Chick-fil-A. I made my son get a job when he's 14 years old and my daughter, you know, she ain't fucking working. She, she, she go to college y'all. But anyway, 
Uh, so I, I set my son down. I said, the world don't owe you shit. Get a job. You're 14 years old. And it, it, it's not because you need the money. It's because I'm teaching you life skills. And my son still work today. Right. Make a long story short. I had these two kids in the car with him one day. And I said, uh, hey, so, so, so they niece and nephew. I said, why y'all ain't got no job yet? He's like, June bug driving. I'm like, hell yeah, he got a car. He got a job. And I said, why you don't have a, why you not, why you don't you have a job yet? He's like, well, mama said we can't get no job because if we do, it's going to fuck up our food stamps. And that shit kicked me in my chest. Yeah. Cause I was like, do you know what you train in here? Mm. Do you know the mindset that you're putting these kids in? And I know a lot of people going to write in and call in and say, well, Miss Pat, what about corporate America stealing? We're not talking about corporate America stealing. We're not talking about the government stealing. I'm just talking about the programs that I've been on and I see people that continue to hinder themselves by staying on these programs. Like I have a girlfriend who always tell me I'm poor. Even when I was poor, you couldn't tell me I was fucking poor. Right. I said, when you, when you feed the brain certain shit, the brains begin to allow you to live that. Mm -hmm. When you tell the brain that you're poor, the brain ain't going to allow you to function because you don't talk the brain to tell you don't talk the brain. You're poor. Right. I always said, bitch, I'm rich. I'm going to buy this motherfucking house. I didn't have no clue how I was going to buy my section eight house. I wanted to own it by I was 25. Now, I became. She sold crack. Yeah, she sold drugs. <laughs> <laughs> by illegal, illegal means. Yeah. That's not how I bought it. I tell you how I bought my section eight house. What happened was I was an old scheming bitch. Yeah, it's a lot of fraud. Listen, or... it was fraud. So what happened? No, not to buy Check the house. Check, Check. No, no, what? No. So I, I went and worked for General Motors, right? And when you work for, when you work, you're supposed to report it. At this time, this is in the nineties. And one, at the first time I worked for General Motors, the unemployment office was not hooked up to the welfare office. Right. So you're supposed to tell the welfare office everything you're doing. Hey, I got a job and you need to recalculate my rent. Oh, you need to recalculate my benefits and my, and my, my section eight. Fuck them. I'm going to get free rent and I'm making $20 an hour. Well, the next time I went to go do temp work, they called me and they was like, Hey, bitch, did you work at General Motors? I'm like, uh, how you know, bitch? They said, according to the unemployment office, you owe us seven thousand dollars in back rent. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, do you? That wasn't enough. So, at the time, I didn't have a seven thousand dollars. I had a, such a great landlord at the time. Bless her soul. I need to call and see if she's still alive. But I had a, such a great landlord who didn't want me to lose my Section A certificate. She gave me the seven thousand dollars, and she knew at the oh. time my husband was living with me. And she said, hey. And then I had a husband who probably made twelve dollars an hour at the time that I didn't report either. So I tell her, I said, "Hey, what we gonna do is?" She said, "She said just pay me back monthly extra with the rent." So we ended up paying her back when we got our taxes. I went and did the same old stupid shit again. So I run into this mean bitch. You know when you black, the first thing you want to pull is the race car. She she said, "I've given you two chances, three chances, and each time you lie, I'm taking your certificate." I'm like, oh! Take my free rent, bitch. <laughs> I got all these crack babies. Don't take my free rent, bitch. I'm poor. She said, get a job and tell the truth next time. And she looked at me like a devil. I was like, I hate you, you white bitch. You're racist. She said, but you're going to appreciate me later because you're going to get a job. And do you? Nigga, I went out and bought that house. I bought that house, got a job, and got my shit together. And I have to say, that was one. That was one of the biggest step in my life. That lady taking that fucking certificate from me, because mm. I, I don't know if I would still be on it, but I probably was. I probably would still would have been scheming for another five years on it. Yeah. And I go home and I tell my, I lost my Section A certificate. My husband like, good. Now you'll go to work every day. Yeah, and I, and I think the the older you get, the more you realize like. I wish I had started X earlier. I wish mm -hmm. I had started X earlier. That lost time, that five years, you may not be sitting here with all the opportunities you've got if you hadn't had that happen. I, you know, and I'm just, I'm glad my mind opened. I started to like, and I had a, you know, I talk about this later all the time. Who's my godmama, the caseworker, who told me she used to beat me down about being on welfare. She's like, aren't you ashamed? And I'm like, no, bitch, it's free. Free Medicaid, free welfare. She was like, do you understand that you can make way more than you could ever earn? They, they could ever, you could earn way more than they could ever pay you. And she started to change my mindset. And it's just like we were talking about on the last podcast about race. You have to, a lot of times, if you don't talk about it, people don't know. You'll be surprised how conversation bring on a motherfucker who you thought that who you thought should have know just don't know, and you right. teaching them something. And I learned a lot from her. I learned standards. To be honest, yeah. she taught me a lot of fucking standards. Her name is Miss Chambers. She's like, you shouldn't be on welfare. You shouldn't be on welfare with no man in your house. Why not, bitch? It's free. 
She said, if you get anything, it should be for your sister kids. But I worked really hard till eventually when my husband got, when we both, when my husband went to go work for General Motors full time to take everybody off of Medicaid, everybody off of welfare. Yeah, my dad ran a janitorial company when I was a kid and he hired a lot of poor whites. And they would always say, can you only schedule me for 39 hours this week? I don't want to lose any of my benefits. And he would eventually find a way to fire them after that. Because he thought, if they're going to rip off the taxpayers or if they're going to scheme on them, then what are they going to do when they're cleaning banks for me? You know, it's kind of like if, if you're, if you're like, did you, when you look back, like, did you look at that as, uh, like it was free? It was free. It was like two checks. But I'm going to work it, a little bit. But there, where did you think the money came from? You don't, you don't know when you don't, when you're not a part of the system. When you, when you, when you, when you when, I didn't know because I wasn't paying attention to what was going on in the world. Right. I didn't know it was tax pills. Like, honestly, when I started to, when I became a homeowner and I started to really work for what I get, and I was like, it, when, like, this how this shit work? Mm. Like, I never thought I would ever get mad at people with food stamps. So I'm here in, in my neighborhood and I'm at, I'm at, I think I told you this, I'm at, um, I'm at Walmart and I'm sitting there and I got some frozen juice and I look over in the buggy and I used to tell a bit about it. Remember this bitch had like five things of tropicanica and I never look up at the person. And I was like, bitch, where do you work at that you can buy five tropicanica at one time? Not the little girl, no big one. They're like $14 each. Okay. You know, like is it the juice? The juice, the tropical juice? orange juice. Oh, okay, the real gotcha. deal right. with the snap top and the fucking little aluminum foil on the top. You got to peel back. I'm talking about the, the recyclable container that you can use <laughs> as a Kool-Aid jug right. when you finish. <laughs> Okay. You remember that joke? So she had five in the bucket. And I'm like, bitch, where do you work at? That in the middle of the day, you could just buy five things of fucking tropical juice at one time. And I look up and she pulled out a fucking food stamp card. And I was like, this bitch. And I look at my bucket and I got frozen juice. And I was like, oh, my God. I got to stop. I feel like a middle-aged white man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hating. I'm hating. And it was a girl my bro- my son used to date. She's like, hey, Miss Pat. I'm like, hey, bitch. Can you give me one of them orange juice? <laughs> so I can put this frozen shit back. <laughs> but at that moment, I really felt like a Republican. I had to shake it off. Oh, let me shake the hate off. Let me shake the hate off. <laughs> Not that Republicans are hate, hate, I mean, haters, but that day, boy, I was pissed off that bitch had all that orange juice. I'm going to take a break, and when I come back, we're going to finish talking about how do you buy five gallons of orange juice and not be broke. All right, y'all, we back. We're talking about uh, being on welfare, making changes in your life, eating good. Tropicanica. Tropicanica orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saying it right? Yeah, no. No. Well, You're that's never why, saying it that's right. Why I had to look at Dion and go, is this one of your Kool-Aid drinks? Is this like grape, like grape so, soda? Well, I hate that you make me the fucking liaison to white, white Chris. I really do. Tropa, who? Tropicana. Tropa, what the fuck is Tropicana? I have no idea. <laughs> I thought it was some sort of mysterious pineapple drink. I, I don't know how I know what you're trying to say. Y'all got to stop letting me mispronounce all these fuck. And y'all just sitting there like we having a great conversation. Because we're like, trying to figure out what you're saying. I know what you're trying, you're to, trying say, to say. I don't, I don't want to make you feel like you're fucking up these words. Tell me. No I'm pain. not doing it. Tropicanical. Tropicana. Tropicana. Yeah. Why I'm putting the anarchy on? I don't know. The it, fuck is tropicanical? We don't know. It sounds good though. Yeah, that's a new orange juice. juice. <laughs> it's, 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 Maybe they'll sponsor this show. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <But> <laughs> 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 I love when I fuck. I swear, y'all, I did not fuck up that word intentionally. Shit just come out of my mouth, and, and for some reason, I think my tongue <laughs> is long. It just add words. <laughs> 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 You have a lot of kids. You don't get a Yeah, lesson. yeah. And they don't drink tropicanical either. They drink tropicanical. <laughs> tropicanical. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at this shit. Oh, tropicana. Tropicana orange juice. Yeah, tropicana orange juice. But, you know, seeing her buy that orange juice that day, I was like, oh. I said, I'm really fucking becoming a Republican. I'm, re- I'm hating on a girl for being able to buy better juice. Right. Then I'm like, but that's my money she buying that juice yeah. with. And so I had to shake it off, y'all. I was like, that's not right. You don't know people's situation. Don't be acting like that. And I just, I gave her a hug and told her, enjoy the juice. It, okay, so let me ask you guys this, because I personally 
feel like as long as I'm okay, I don't care what you do with whatever money that I've spent in taxes. So now if I'm out here struggling where I'm barely making ends meet and I see you buying 18 Tropicanicas, <laughs> I'm going to be pissed the fuck off. But if, if I'm good and I see you buying Tropicana, I, I'm not going to give a fuck. I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm at a point in my life where I have made $17,000 and then I'm at a point where I'm doing well and I work so much harder and I have had so many years of sacrificing and not having, not doing well, not like to get to a point for the ability to pay this much in taxes. And I'm like, why are they eating? Why are they eating better than I? like you get that bill every April 15th and you just go, fuck, you know, yeah. and it's probably worse for you. Cause you're, you're a 1099 all over the place. Like, I mean, it, it at the end, I, I think it's more opposite for me. Like, I, I don't I, mind helping, but I don't want to hinder. Like, I don't mind, you know, I, I, like I, I said, I'm a Democrat. I would never vote against shit that I might need in the future. It's a bit I used to do. But I don't have a problem with you getting food stamps. But my whole thing is, I don't want you to get food stamps Since for forever. the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. I right. mean, if, 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 I, if we need to, if I need, because you don't never know when something might happen. Y'all, literally, my husband went down. At the beginning of January, what was it? January, he had a, a torn ACL. Yeah. And that rocked my fucking household. It didn't kill us, but it rocked my fucking household. Yeah. You talking about a man who, who fucking make good money and who had to go down to fucking disability and something else's job game, which was probably more than a lot of people paycheck. But still, when your household is functioning that, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't break us, right. but I, I, we missed that extra income. Right. So it didn't. It didn't make me need to go apply for food stamps. We fucking still fed the fat kids around here. But I, <laughs> I understand everybody has ups and downs in their life, and that's what we're supposed to be here. Everybody, you know, I help you, you help me, and the world's supposed to help each other. My problem is when you, when you abuse the system. Yeah. No, I've had I've had a lot of friends, and a lot of them even are libertarians who have used, you know, the the inf, like the healthy Indiana plan for their kids or. You know, which is kind of our Medicaid for for, for Medicaid or American. I can never. I don't know what the difference is. Um, or have used food stamps programs to get by, and it's not a lifestyle. It's it's like I'm. I need temporary help. Like y you you go well. You paid all the money when you were productive, and then at this point, if you need to get by, like take take the government help. That's kind of what I tell people. Like if I'm cutting stuff, if I'm trying to save money, I'm starting with the bombs in Yemen. I'm starting with military spending. I'm just forming entitlements. Like I don't, I'm not the type of person that says our first cut ought to be food stamps or, and Medicaid. Or, that shit yeah. pisses me off. Social you know? Security. Yeah. But I, but I do think that it is interesting to go back and read Bill Clinton's 1992 campaign book, which reads like a Republican's book now. Like it would be Mitt Romney's campaign book to see the way that he ran in '92. And most of it was about welfare reform, and I know you did that. Yeah, I know you talked a lot about that, and a lot of people like I've heard people have similar stories where his welfare reform kind of forced them to go, "All right, time to it's the welfare get up off my ass." I mean, what were some of the things that kind of forced you? What what were the changes and that that made it not a lifestyle? It turned it well. He started taking shit where before they was just giving you just stay at home and stay vote vote and stay the fuck at home. Well, when Bill Clinton came along, you know, he's the first person I ever voted for. When he came along, he started taking shit. He said, "Hey, you're not gonna get food stamp. You're not gonna get welfare. You're not gonna get Section Eight if you don't get out and go and get educate yourself. If you go out and get a job. Right. So when they taking shit, they're forcing you to get up off your ass." Like now, in certain places in this world, in this country, you can't get wealth. You can't add. I heard you. They just started back allowing you to add kids. But Bill Clinton, them, they stopped it. Whatever mm. amount of kids you had on welfare, you had any more, you can add. Hmm. You know, so that would force me to get up off my ass because I wasn't getting no extra $40 for no more children. Right. Oh, I just add this child here. They gonna give another hundred dollar food stamp. No motherfucker. You can get food stamp, but you couldn't get welfare. Right. And when you add another mouth, whether them, that little extra money they were giving you help. So you're like, Oh, I gotta meet, I gotta feed this motherfucker. This right. motherfucker need pamples. So that what made me get up when they started to take free shit from me. Mm. And it woke me the fuck up. Especially when I lost that free rent. 
Yeah. You make a motherfucker lose free rent, it, they either going to become homeless or they going to go out and do the fuck they got to do to have a roof over their baby. And real mama survive. The bitch going to go get three jobs. That's what I believe. Yeah. That's it. That's the only problem I have with it. And you know, and, and, and being a landlord, how the government, you, you, you get on these programs to help people, but is, is, is nothing to help the landlord when they tap your fucking property. Right. This lady cost me $18,000 worth of damage and I literally did not get a dime from them. All and they you said, didn't get to beat her ass. And I didn't get to beat her ass because if I got to beat her ass, they'd lock me up. Right. And the bitch, and they let her have her certificate so she can go off to the next person and treat their properties like that. That's baffling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She it's really won't. not, though, honestly. And she had the audacity you, you, to ask me for her deposit back, which it, was $1,000. I said, bitch, I will put kidding? a knot on your head. Yeah. It's, it's not surprising that she tore up your house and then just was, huh. Because it happens so, like, honestly, it probably happens a lot. So much so right. that. The fuck, it's just like when you, you get arrested, like the log jam. They just trying to get people out of there. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah just no, fucking. I got my tires stolen off of my car, all four tires, and the cops didn't investigate it. And the people that stole my tires knew that they weren't ever going to investigate it. And so when there's no real penalties, it's right. like, so I'm not a libertarian because I just am selfish or wanted to lose every election. It's just that <laughs> when you talk to so many people, you Y'all just do lose a lot of elections. Every one, every single one, every single one. Um, but you, you never vote Democrat. Uh, yeah, I vote Democrat. I vote Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and an Independent. If almost every election. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I vote. So you just stay on that side. You a loser, motherfucker. Yeah, I am. You, you, you like know. the, you like the Cleveland Brown. It's, it's, it's like CPS. Damn, you just. You just trashed all your Cleveland listeners. Yeah. <laughs> they they going to have a good team this year. Like CPS, I just had an instance where a friend, uh, their, their kid's going through something, and it's because of the other parent, and the kid told the doctor, so the doctor called CPS. Well, a report was written. They show up to the parent that is the good parent's house to do the inspection, and they never show up to the bad parent's house because they have a lawyer, and... Everybody just sort of feels like, well, something was done. We called this government agency. Meanwhile, nothing ever changes for the kid. No. I mean, you they're know, so fucked up. CPS here is so fucked yeah, up. Yeah, you, you have all of these institutions that just bureau- the bureaucracy allows you to hide and get mm-hmm. away with bad behavior, and there's never any consequences. And it's just like, it just doesn't work. Like, so I'm not surprised that they never faced any kind of consequences for like, it. Like, I have custody of my niece, four kids, right? And, um, so she just up and left. She said, uh, I, I see y'all later. Like, oh, okay, bitch. W- what about these children? Just disappeared. Went on vacation, came back and said, I'm out this bitch hmm. and left them. So this has been about three, four years ago now. Literally, when I went to them, I said, I don't want food stamps. I don't want Medicaid. All I want is child care. I don't want welfare. They said no child care. I said, so what the fuck I supposed to do with four kids when I travel and I got two kids in high school? I don't give a fuck. So then they said, well, I sent CPS come out here. Can y'all just help me get daycare? They said, well, well, maybe you can be a foster parent. And then I started talking to them about my background. They said, oh, you, you a convicted fellow? I'm like, yeah. Oh, well, you got to put the kids in the system. And if you put them in the system, you might not never get them back. <laughs> Bitch, I'm not taking these kids through right. that for that little pussy ass shit y'all giving me. So I said, well, ma'am, I just want daycare. No, literally. They took it. They didn't give me shit for four fucking kids that I've been raising now for almost five years. But listen to this. This is how fucked up the system is. Chris, if you or Dion would have taken those kids, they'd have gave y'all a $700 a pop. And it's four of them. Why? Because you're no kin to them. Oh. Yeah. It just seems like government in general, from the president on down, rewards bad behavior. The worst bad behavior. the worst you are, the less it works. Like if you're it's a the pro- American way, what it, you talking right. about? If you're a productive <laughs> it, it really is. Like if you're a decent, hardworking person, you get fucked every you day. You get fucked. And if you are a piece of shit, you're gonna succeed. And I just I call that cowboys and Indians. I'm telling Why? you. Because the Indians was decent. They cared about the land. Cowboys was like, pew, guns, guns. <laughs> Let me get that shit. Trail of tears. That's literally how it fucking happened since people came over here. Shit was going fine and dandy. They they fought, but they, you know, they the land was good. Fucking corporations came over here. The water's fucked up. And they just moved somewhere else. It's like Game of Thrones. It's like Isaiah Thomas. 
He failed at every fucking GM job he had, and he kept getting work. Right. He was the Pacers head coach, sucked. He became he was the Raptors GM, sucked. He went to the Knicks, sucked twice. <laughs> he sucked twice, and they brought him. I was like, and he was getting paid the entire. I was like. He hasn't won anything anywhere since he left the Pistons. Isaiah yeah. Thomas, that was a player. The basketball, yeah. Yeah, he was a Hall of Famer. He left the Pistons. He won two championships with the Pistons. Where is he now? He's on NBA TV. Yeah. It's like, how does this motherfucker keep getting jobs? Because he's fucking NBA. It's so amazing. Uh, you right. They reward. It, yeah. It's comedy, too. They reward the bad ones. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of somebody right now that I hate so much <laughs> and is such an asshole, and they just keep failing up and failing up. And you just go, and if you fuck? say anything, you're a fucking hater. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you're yeah. a fucking hater. Like, fucking hate. But that yeah. particular person, you just go, how does this person keep failing into great opportunities? Mm -hmm. What a piece of garbage. Because they, they, like you said, they just it's like the government. They just keep rewarding bullshit. I, I, me and Dion talk about this shit all the time since we since we moved away from uh welfare and crazy motherfucking. We moved into the comedy. You look at comedy and you be like, how the fuck yeah. do this person get this? Yeah. And you know, I had a friend that tell me it's like it ain't even about being funny no more. Yeah. I think I'm fucking hilarious. I'm uh, everyday conversation is fucking funny at my house. Yeah. But funny ain't doing a motherfucking thing for me sometimes. Yeah. Cause you look at you like this motherfucker selling out theaters and they pretty much just talking about sucking dicks. And it's like I, I honestly I've seen some of these people that we've talked about live and I, I watch the crowd, I'm like, what are y'all what is it? Why do I not find that funny? Right. As, as a person in the industry, like, if anything, a comic should laugh at your joke because they get how you came up with it. You know, I know where you're going with right. it. So I should be like, that's funny. Right. And I'm just sitting back and I'm like, it's you could do so much more <laughs> with that idea. And you just, it's just, just shit. It's, it's politics too. I look at it and I go, why are you people falling for this? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter what party. You just go, why are you saying this about immigration when it's verifiably untrue? It's just, I don't know what it is about the human animal. But it's we're like just everybody so, jump on the same fucking wagon yeah, and ride pack, it out. Pack animals. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody want to do research for themselves. Nobody wants to say, you know, like, it's almost like it's like Hollywood, too. All the movies, if they don't stop remaking those sitcoms and remaking movies, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally going to kill myself. If I see one more motherfucking movie from the 1980s remake. If you see a live action Little Mermaid, it's over. Oh. Because <laughs> you you know it's coming. Yeah, I'm like, Hold people. Uh, just a disclaimer. If you'd like to hire Miss Pat for a remake <laughs> of any of these things, <laughs> please get in touch with her agent. <laughs> I'm like, do Hollywood have any fucking original ideals? 20 Tw years from now, we're going to be doing Black Game of Thrones. 20 2019, Miss Pat. If I'm going to kill myself, 2020, Miss Pat. Yes, call me Wheezy. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to be Wheezy for a paycheck. I'm we finally Weezy. got a pizza. pizza. <laughs> Moving on up, goddamn. If you gonna move me on up, I'm Wheezy. You could be George. All right, I'm, you could be fucking George. I'd make you a great me? George. Yeah, I, you, you can you moonwalk. Oh, yeah. I just for the I right mean, price. I just I, I'm tired of them rewarding the bullshit. Whether it's in politics. Whether it's in fucking being a lazy piece of shit, uh, not giving your part to society, whether it's comedy or whatever, it just it sickens me. It just it fucking sickens me. We empower it with the choices we make. Every dollar you spend, every click online, every vote that you make, we reward bad behavior. And if you're tired of it, you gotta make the, you gotta make some changes. I can't look at no more the the dog dick sucking videos. You wouldn't. Well, I don't know why you would be looking at those, Miss Pat. In the first not the place. dog dick sucking video, like the crazy videos I've been sending you. Yeah, Miss Pat sends me videos. My my inbox with her looks like a world star Instagram. Feed. <laughs> 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 and I, like I send to her. She sent like, you the video of the, uh, the 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 stripper in Atlanta with the fucked up ass. Did, I, you, did you get that? video? I've watched ninety percent of them. <laughs> She'll be like, "Have you watched that? That's so funny." I'm like. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a minute. So when I click on that, I'm rewarding bad behavior because some Pretty of that much. shit. Yeah. Some of that, well, dear, you just watched a man get hit in the balls. That shit was funny. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, some of that shit is like the the fucking camera who stuck the, the stuck the man head in his mouth. 
The camel? Like, the camel. Yeah, the camel, yeah. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I mean, the, these people aren't getting hurt. They're just the buffoons. I'm talking about, like, you're exploiting the tragic leg break of this college girl who's the gymnast that no. breaks up. And you just go, I'm not clicking on that. Like, that's just painfotainment. Like, that's no, it's the same human impulse that I'd go watch, you know, uh, Christians being killed in the Coliseum or a hanging, you know? Like, you just go... Th- that's you. Gruesome. I remember when that man head got cut off the first time they cut. The, well, don't be the only time they ever they videotape that man head cut off. Uh, oh, Nick he, Berg and I would Al-Qaeda. not watch that. I would not. My friends. I remember watching watch, Saddam uh, get hung. Yeah, I remember watching. That. I didn't watch that either. I can't watch you kill nobody. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what you say they did. I can't do it. I'm I watched just, the Nick Berg video and I. Was, how dare you? I I was like eighteen maybe. And I just went. I will never watch anything like that again. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm, I'm like me. that too. I can't. Yeah. I don't find pleasure in actual death or right. like that shit's not funny. But if you get hit in the nuts with a right. fucking that video I showed you, like that. Oh, a camel put your head in his mouth. Yeah, that's funny. That's right. funny. But like, I don't get off on that. I don't go looking for that. If it shows up on my timeline, I will view it. But I'm not one of those people who's like, oh. Let me find the next video of this guy getting his head chopped off, or any, you know, people will spend hours on YouTube. Faces of death. Yeah, you just, that when we yeah. Were kids? yeah. Or a thousand ways to die. That right. that type that of that used shit. to creep me to fuck. I, out. I have no interest in any of that shit. Me neither. So I mean, that, that's just what I do. I mean, I don't. <clears throat> I can't. I, I know. I can't. Um. Uh, I can't watch certain shit like that. I don't want to see nobody die. You know. I just want to see everybody pay their part. I don't mind helping anybody. Here come my daughter-in-law. It's always somebody coming to my fucking house. This is the Grand Central Station. It's, it's damn near. Yeah. And she got the cold to the door, too. Hey, daughter-in-law. It's just, and, and y'all got to remember, this is just all opinion. This don't mean shit. It's just the way we feel, Chris, Dion, and I. You know, I don't, don't go out there and talk about Miss Pat, talking about, no, talking about people on welfare because you're a goddamn lie. I'm not. I'm just giving you my part, my point of view from being a landlord. The bitch tore up my house. And I, y'all hear my grandsons out there. Hurry up. Them motherfuckers out there, they, they going to take off your car. What's happening right now is one of Miss Pat's daughter in law. My daughter-in-law. Daughter in law. She too good for my son, y'all. Really? <laughs> yeah, she's too good for my son. So, you know, but we're gonna wrap it up because we we fucking There's end. Phone it. calls coming in. There's yeah, I gotta go feed this dog. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my hung, friend. I gotta Cortland. go feed myself. <laughs> what Cortland? What up, Cortland? We're doing a podcast. Say hi. Oh, what's up, y'all? <laughs> 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 hey, make, hey, make sure they go on there too. <laughs> Black folks always want fucking yeah. shout out. I'm going Give on Judge. Shout out. I'm going on Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> What'd you say? Shout the boy out. Shit, I'm trying to get on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, baby. I love you. Yeah, get a bar and leave, please. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, that's, that's been Miss Pat, Dion, and uh, Chris. Thank y'all for tuning in on another episode of The Pat Down. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Pat Down. Make sure you check out my website at misspatcomedy.com for all of my social media, my tour dates, my book. Make sure you spread the word about my podcast. Please rate and review. Please rate and review and share. Thank y'all so much, y'all. I've been Miss Pat.